Okay. It's a pleasure to introduce our second speaker today, Professor Daniel Barrera Salazar from Universidad de Santiago de Chile. He will talk about the addict variations by evaluations on the cohomology. Please. Oh. Oh, thanks for this invitation. It is a really pleasure to give a, a, a talk in this conference. Uh, very close to Valparaiso, at least, but <laughs> we are not there, but we are close. <laughs> OK. Um, as uh, Adrian said, my, the title is Piadic Variation via Evaluation of the Cohomology. And the first part of my talk, I would like to, to give some kind of motivation of which is the goal of what I'm going to, to explain later. So let me start with a kind of introduction or motivation. So I start with G uh, via connected, uh, oh, connected um, reductive group or Q. Connected reductive group or Q. Okay, attached to a group like that, you have a, a theory that we were discussing a lot these, these days, is uh, a theory of, of automorphic representations. Um, I would like to insist in some kind of particular case of automorphic representation, which are the al algebraic automorphic representation, which is mm, automorphic representations of GA. A is the group of a delta of Q, okay? So you have this space. In another side, as you as you were looking at the, uh, watching at the conference, you have another set of interesting objects. This is some continuous uh, some some continuous uh, Galo representations, huh? representation of let's see or Q. Okay. Okay. So you, you have these two sets of objects, and you have several uh, problems here. For example, you have some a specific relation, some more or less relations between them, which are very conjectural in some in a lot of settings, but give a bridge between these two worlds. Yes, it's very conjectural, but there are a lot of also works in some cases. But okay, let's give some names attached to this bridge, Langlands. A Closel, there is a um, bus RG, very give more precise condition on the algebricity. Okay. Uh, okay, you have some conjectural bridge and results also in these two worlds. Uh, for example, let me point out also on, on the right, there are important conjectures. Let me insist in important conjectures uh, on the on the right and in this side of the color representations. One kind of problem that you, you have here that is uh, you have the um, interpretation of uh, L, special L values, special L values of color representations. Okay. Uh, so now let's, as you have bridges, you have, for example, some automorphic representation here. You have some conjectural, some Gala representation here. In some cases, you're, you already have the Gala representations. And this conjectural picture will give you some kind of satisfied some equality of L functions. The, L, the automorphic L function here, I, I'm not precise, you know that for each group you have different kind of L function attached to a standard, etc. depending on the situation. Just let's say the, 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 the complex L function, the sum L function. 
And also this number can be in, in, can be a uh, holomorphic sometimes, but okay. Okay, but you have this picture. And I would like to insist on the left, this side is very rich in methods. Okay. And that is why we are going to explode, exploit it today. Okay. So that is why I want to speak, speak today is it's mostly on the left hand side about the me to produce method method that you have on the left hand side that can be useful to, to do something on the right, etc. Okay, so there are two between this, this method that you have. Uh, there are a useful tool is in, in this, this kind of problem is, is the following. So it's, let me give in few few words, what, what is the kind of idea? So take P a prime, okay? And the strategy of, we can say that the, the method of the, that is, is used a lot. And maybe you just see some ideas of this in, in Professor Hida talk, he used this so it's to produce. And in also in Luis talk was used the idea to periodic uh, variation. It's to produce periodic variation of, let me, periodic variation is the, the team here, okay. so of what? You produce periodic variation of everything that is in the picture. In one side, you vary pi, the automorphic representation, you would like to vary it in a, some something that has some meaning, periodically, some family, some geometrical object. You can also give a meaning to the, the, uh, Oh, the, the variation of the Galo representation attached. I have the notation I will put raw. And also you can try to vary uh, the L functions or the special values of it, okay? So that is a useful tool. And the goal of this talk is The goal of this talk of this the stuff that I, I'm going to explain now is going the, in this in this line. So my goal is to use uh, one specific kind of cohomology, this cohomology of arithmetic groups. Uh, to perform three three goals. The first goal is to give in pi to deform it in some kind of, uh, maybe that is the third goal. The first goal will be so given pi. So you have the, uh, the, the L function of this pi and you want to, to, to interpolate to create a periodic variation of the special values of it. Produce periodic variation of the special values of the complex L function of this. Okay. The goal two will be now is you take the the automorphic representation, and you want to vary now the automorphic representation, okay? And that is normally called periodic family, or there is more sophisticated name that I will give you now. Study the geometry of periodic families of automorphic representations. Okay. This here, the, let me give a name. 
this object that encode the Piatix families are called, are called eigenvarieties. And the Piatic object that produce variation of the special values are called Piatical functions. Okay. So the third goal will be to put goal one and goal two together in some way. It is to construct Piatical function over these eigenvarieties. Construct Piatic L functions over eigen, eigen oh. so there is a problem of eigen varieties so that is the goal of my talk of the pro the, the works i'm going to explain now this is the goal there are these three goals that will be mixing here so the idea behind is periodic variation of everything. And I would like to remark that, that this, is, this is only the left-hand side of the picture at the beginning. Everything is automorphic, OK? We are concentrating on the left, where is, we are developing me methods to, to do something, OK? So that is automorphic side. OK, so the second part of this talk is to, I would like to now that that is the goal, I would like to explain some kind of a strategy that to perform these goals. I'm kind of uh, a way, uh, a method that can be used to, to do it. This is a, a cohomological method using cohomology parametric groups, but let me give more, more precise about the ideas behind and how it works, okay? So this is second part. This is one strategy to, to do it. And let me fix some notation. So we fix, we have our group G here in the middle. Okay, we fix a Borel and a maximal torus inside and we call B bar the opposite Borel. Okay, so this is, is, is very standard, this notation. And now let me give an idea of how is going to work this? Okay. Uh, okay. So to do to explain this idea how to perform this goal, let me start with a, an automorphic representation. Let pi be a caspital uh, automorphic representation of G A. Okay, uh, I put this space here because I will suppose this is cohomological. That's, a, that's mean appearing the cohomology of some space, okay? But this, this method can be also used for some non-cohomological situation where you use periodic approximation. For example, weight one, uh, weight one modular forms, you can do something. But let me focus on this to, to give more meaning to where I'm, the picture I'm, I'm trying to explain. Okay, so when you have a, a automorphic representation, you have two data attached to it in the same way when you have a modular form, you have two numbers attached to it. One of it is the level. Okay, in this more general context, a level means a compact, uh, open compact of some the finite, the yeah, finite adult points of G, okay? An open compact. Is the, if you think, if you take G equals SL2, for example, yeah? Uh, this K can be put in correspondence with the congruence group that we, we find usually, okay? Okay, attached to this level, you have a geometrical object which is the analog of the modular curve. And here is some, um, we will denote this by, by yk, which is an uh, arithmetical, arithmetic, uh, arithmetic manifold. Um, the definition of it is, is a double cost. It is gq on the left acting on the 
at the least point of G. And on the right, you quotient by the level and some K infinity, which is, uh, is in the, the real points of G, which is, uh, is contact modulo the center, okay? Which I'm not going to be, you can be very precise with to that too. Okay, that is your uh, geometrical object attached to it. The cohomology of that is that we are going to, to study and to use. Um, okay, from there, the, the cohomology of that is the appear the arithmetic groups I have said before in the in the goal. Okay, the second number that attached to a modular form is the weight. Okay, in general, for an automorphic representation, the weight is some something that. At the, a priori, at the beginning, it's a little bit confused, but you became used to it. And it's the weight now is a character from this torus that we fixed before. This, okay, it's an algebraic, it's an algebraic character. Algebraic character of, character of it, okay. And we call it lambda zero. Um, again, attached to to this number, to this to this lambda zero, uh, you have another object attached to it. And in, in, for example, for modular forms is the polynomials. And here, here you in a, in a more fancy language maybe, is uh, is a irreducible, irreducible algebraic, algebraic re G representation of, Highest weight lambda zero, highest, highest weight lambda zero. This is a very standard, standard fact from a theory of algebraic reductive algebraic groups of algebraic groups. Um, you have attached to each character. Here I need to add dominant maybe to, to give more meaning, okay? But some technical, non but you can give a precise uh, description of it. This is the induction that you see before, and you can see before you find before in the talk of um, Rambla. Okay, we are here. So attached to this character, this weight, you have this uh, irreducible algebraic representation. It can be described in a very explicit way as the as an algebraic induction. Okay. So you have these two objects attached to the automorphic representation. And now give me, let me explain you the strategy that we will use to construct this, to perform this goal. So here is given by, is given by steps. So the first step is to pass to the cohomology, okay? So you have your automorphic representation and you pass to the cohomology, okay? So you will obtain a class or several classes depending on some signs, signs. A class in the cohomology of this object that we have here. We will focus in some compact support cohomology of some degree t of this yk. And this v lambda zero give you a local system over your, your object. Um, we will take the dual of that. Oh, this. Here, T is some number, some convenient in number. And this is a finite extension of, of QP, uh, big enough as usual, containing eigenvalues, et cetera. Okay, uh, let me point out that this number T, the degree of the cohomology where you are working on, play a, a role, okay? Uh, this cohomology is only Betty cohomology. It's nothing more sophisticated than, than Betty cohomology. Okay, so that is the first thing that you, you, you go there. And then you, you relate this class, you relate this class to a special values of your complex of function that you are, you are interested to do something. You are interested to, to do under some, uh, under some evaluations. Uh, let me give you, so this is step one still. Okay. Uh, the evaluation are given 
something like that is um, you start in your cohomology where you are working on. Okay, and you go to this field L and under some evaluation, okay. And this evaluation depends on the number G. This number G is the um, special value that you fix it, critical values of. It's an integer, which is a special value of it. I mean, this is an integer, okay. This first step is uh, related with uh, it's really it's not it's not this that is related with the linear conjectures on on the l values of motives you know but this is automorphic side okay but it's, it's very related with it and you you also use shimura isomorphism for automorphic representation and you you perform it and you you produce some evaluation like that okay the second step that i have here is the following so you have uh your class here it's an element of this cohomology, okay? And you lift it, you lift, lift this class uh, to a more, to a bigger cohomology. A bigger and also more flexible, more flexible cohomology. And also you lift the, no, I have the surprise there. A lift, uh, the evaluation too. Okay. The first step here is uh, something that you call classicality. Is the Alan analog of classicality theorem uh, by Coleman, for example, used by Coleman, uh, proved by Coleman. Okay. So, this huge cohomology that this B or cohomology that you are going to, to obtain is something like will be again Betty cohomology, the same space, but you are going to change the, um, the coefficients. And we will call it D lambda zero. And let me just call it and in the next part of my talk, I will give you more ideas what, what they are this D lambda zero, D that appear this coefficient that appear here but it's, it's i will i will explain in a few minutes but it's in finite dimensional opposite to, as the lambda zero is finite dimensional okay so you consider this cohomology you will have a map here from this one to this one you will have and you complete the, the picture okay now before you came you arrived only for all on the field L, but now you arrive to a bigger space, which is some space of, let me write this, D will be distributions, okay? Distributions over ZP star with coefficient in L. Now you also, you have a map here, okay? Which is related with the evaluation G, with this number G, okay? Let me point out some important, some important point is, this is space of distribution here that appear a little bit weird. Why it appear there? Why we are interested in that? That is a natural home of theoretical functions. Natural home of theoretical functions. Okay. So if you perform a step two, which is what will be a step two? So you, you complete the picture. So now you lift your class using this classicality theorem that you will be able to prove. You lift it to a canonical class here and we will call like that, okay? So now the picture gives you the answer to the first goal that we stated before. How you can produce periodic variation of your, um, the, the, of your special L values. Okay, you lift your class you apply this picture and then the distribution that you obtain on the right will be will give you by some standard procedure called Melin transform, the periodical function that you are looking for. Okay. And that step one and step two give you the goal one. Okay. Finally, step three will be produce goals two and three and you expect 
the idea is to lift again. Okay, okay, lift. Now you lift this, you have this, this, this bigger class of cohomology. We encode the, the radical function in some way, or, or encode all the, give you the radical function, lift it to a family of classes, okay? To a good family of classes, lift this one to, to a good, a family of classes, okay? So what I mean by that, let me, so you will find the next step is to complete the picture in a one more step. Let me open the window. One more step, and now the, the commodity will be bigger than before. So will be some H, you will we'll be working with the same kind of cohomology. I mean, the same space, the same degree. That is important. You are not moving the degree. Oh, maybe I move the degree without want to move. Yeah. It's, it's always T. That is important. Some precise degree. Okay, and you 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 go to some bigger space, the D, DU, and you you com you complete the picture. And now you you come you arrive to distributions, but not coefficients in one L will be some coefficients some bigger stuff is the ring of functions of this U. Okay, so here U is some rigid space and contains lambda zero is our weight of the model the automorphic representation, and this U contain lambda zero. So it's a kind of you are putting the weight in some, varying the weight, some, some family, okay? And then you complete the picture I, I told you. So here, this is only um, this one is only specialization of your lambda zero, and this one will be some kind of a specialization too. Okay, and then you produce doing these three steps, you produce the good goals. That is a kind of a strategy that I wanted to explain you, okay? You produce this, let me come, the three goals that we have before. Firstly, produce the periodical function, which is step one and step two. And secondly, study the eigenvariety, which is, let, yeah, it's part of a step two, but this is a study, this is really a study of uh, geometry of eigenvarieties, which are the study of the geometry of the periodic families. Okay, okay. So this method was already used in some cases, and now let me in two minutes give you some resume of the different works that were made in this direction using. I'm just explaining the method. Use this method. There are a lot of other methods that are used to produce some kind of this going to the three goals, but just let me point out this this this, this method, okay? Because because if I give the list, it's an enormous list, but just this method. Let me to precise this. So results, no result using this strategy, okay? So the first case that you can imagine will be the case of a gel two over q modular forms that. In fact, the, the father kind of kind of, of this strategy is Stevens. In '94, he 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 produces step one and step two in some way. Uh, Most is step two. Step one is was classical. Step two, um, for modular forms. Okay. Then Pollack Stevens, uh, but Stevens never published a paper, but he have the paper written by a preprint for several years. Pollack Stevens, they improve this strategy. They go further and. They wrote the published papers, and Belage uh, performed step three, putting the study of families. Okay, so the natural uh, natural answer the question is what about the Hilbert case or more classical cases? In the Hilbert case, there are let me Hilbert case in 2013. Uh, I was I was working in step one and step two, uh, step two mostly. Uh, Bergdan Hansel study families. Also in our paper with uh, Dimitro and Georgia, we made uh, study families and we have applied for exceptional zeros. And more recently in 2020, uh, Vala Subramayan in Longo 
working, it's in the Hilbert case, but they construct the adical function for that joint. The adical function of fan over, over the eigen variety for, for the adjoinal value. So it's a different kind of SL function. Okay. okay, that is more classical. So now a more in, a very interesting case is, is the Bianchi situation. No? Is it going the opposite direction where it's not totally real? The field is the aqua, imaginary quadratic um, extension of Q. That is the Bianchi situation. And that was Williams in 2014. He produced step two. Okay, step one and step two. He was developing these ideas. And in 2018, with uh, William, we developed a study of, of families. The, the very interesting point is there are still a lot of stuff to do for Bianchi. There are a lot of open questions. Even in totally real, there are, because the situ this the non cohomological situation, you need to attack, you, you can do something maybe. And more in, uh, a very interesting situation is the critical situation. At the end of the talk, we will see what's mean critical, but uh, the name tell you that this is it's a it's subtle situation. It's, you need to do something. Okay, for J2 over, any field we, with 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 William, we we do that step two and part uh, some some papers also step step three. But okay, and okay. Finally, that is everything's gel two, and more recently with uh, in in a work with uh, Dimitrov and Williams, uh, we are uh, we have uh, preprint and in a few weeks I think we will be in archive this. Yeah, for for gel, restriction of gel gel n so gel n over a totally real field and even okay that is the history I I I hope that I didn't miss reference but okay that is a situation but everything is cuspidal okay so we take a cuspidal automorphic representation we have some condition and we we perform this strategy in the non-cuspidal situation. Uh, I mean, Einstein on okay, was in the Borgel tuber cues, Belay, Das Gupta, that they, they produce this, develop these ideas following this strategy. And um, now it's in the Bianchi and non Caspidal setting, which is very interesting situation, is Luis Palacios that maybe is here. He is working on his PhD thesis in Santiago. Okay. Let me now give more details about the object that appear here. And at the end, I will give some ideas of the work of gel and even gel four, gel six, gel two, well, gel two is okay. okay. Okay, let me give more ideas. So to that, I will explain a, a work in this, a work that we made with Chris Williams where we, we produce uh, convenient families in a, 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 a big generality. So the generalities take the group, the reductic groups as before, connected or two group, and we suppose that it's quasi split at P. Okay. Under this assumption, we can produce uh, so families of the machinery that was in the picture. I mean, this D lambda, D lambda U, and they varieties. But that was based in some work of Hansen, Urban, and but I will give you now more details. So let me explain you a little bit the ideas of this work. Okay, that is called parahoric uh, over convergent cohomology. So these objects in blue that were in the picture of the strategy, let me come back a little bit. This blue D lambda zero and D lambda U, the cohomology of these objects are called uh, over convergent cohomology or more general parahoric over convergent cohomology. So now I will concentrate on data, give you some ideas. Okay. Okay. Firstly, let me let me point out that the type of the addicts families of automorphic representation that you have that you can produce depend on a choice. And the choice is a choice of a parabolic. Of a parabolic subgroup of G. Okay. So, so you have B, okay. You have G. So everything is at P, okay. So we can just 
Let me put and you you base change your group to, to p and at p is the situation. So a parabolic is something in the middle. Okay. Can be B and also can be G. We are the extreme case, but you have uh, several situations in the middle. Okay, you will see more specific examples at the end of the talk when we will speak about gl theorem. Okay, uh, so you can develop the theory for B, and the theory for B is, is is good. You have more variation, which is class. Is, is, this this situation is classical, we can say in some way, and um, but you have more restrictions restrictions on the automorphic representations instead if you work if you don't work with b you work with q something in the middle you have a less variation which is bad but you have a more more flexibility you have less restrictions So for example, you have no, in some, some situations, you have no four dimensional variation on the eigen variety, but you have a two dimensional variation, which is just an, it's enough for application sometimes. Okay. And you have less restriction of the automorphic representation, which is good. You can apply the method for more in more situations. Okay. One remark. And it seems that the parabolic situation, which is working with Q, uh, is. It's better in, in any from any point of view. In fact, David Loeffler have seen some conjectures uh, on big parabolic eigenvarieties. There is the conjectures of this year. And there are already some example of that, but I'm not going to speak about big parabolic eigen varieties. I'm just going to speak about the small one, yes, small parabolic eigen varieties. And yeah, but it seems promising what is going on. So the first theorem that I want to, to, to state is a theorem of Ash Stevens in 2008, Urban. 2011 and Hansen 2015 and they develop a over convergent over convergent uh, cohomology and to construct eigenvarieties to construct Okay, so that is a, they work with B. Okay, in some way, so B, they work with B. What we did with Chris William uh, this year, is to develop the same, but for parabolic situations. So let me copy, no, we develop, a, para a parahoric over convergent cohomology uh, to construct eigenvarieties. Okay, and that is a Q theory. We work with any parabolic in the middle. In particular, we recover the theory of. Hansen and Urban and Ash Stevens. Okay. So I have prepared some ideas of the construction that I will explain you, and then gel two and situation. Um, let me see how much time I have. Fifteen minutes, something like that. Not Luis. Yeah, you have fifteen minutes. Okay, so I I think I have time to, to do it. Let me give you some ideas to. Of this construction to ideas of the construction behind this stuff. 
these eigenvarieties that to, to give you some ideas of these, these, these modules that we have there. Okay. So you fix some lambda zero, which is a, a character, and you fix also a level. As before, that you are thinking you have fixed some automorphic representation. You have your parabolic that you are working on. You have a decomposition in terms of the Levy times the unipotent part of the, the parabolic. And you have attached to it a parahoric, which will give the name to the, this cohomology and it's called GQ. And this parahoric is the element of GZP, which are modulo P, they belong to the parabolic. Okay, that is the standard definition of parahoric. Okay, to construct eigenvarieties, you need data. You need three, three things at least. So data, to construct eigenvarieties. So what do you need firstly? You need a notion of variation. So what you are going, in this theory, we are going to vary the weight. You can also vary the level and you can produce something else. But here we are varying the, we fix the level and we vary the weight, okay? So the first thing is weight space. And that gives rise to the U that was in the, at the beginning, you remember, in the strategy. Of the, so the weight spaces. So first, the, the, the big weight space, you consider the homomorphic continuous homomorphisms of TZP with coefficient in ZP star, but it's too big. That is for the classical theory. You consider inside the, the homomorphisms, the continuous homomorphisms of LQ, the levy of your parabolic, this is a better space for your situation, your parabolic situation. You move, you translate by lambda zero, which is your fixed weight. And that is our weight space that we are considering. So you see there is less variation on the original space that is there, but this one is, is enough for you have variation. This is the weight space that you are considering and this have a natural rigid uh, structure, rigid variety in the language of rigid geometry. Okay, it's analog of the complex geometry, analytic complex geometry. Okay, that is your weight space that give you already a notion of variation. Secondly, the second object that you need, you need some Hecke modules to produce, to do something. Hecke models that you are considering are the following. So here is the construction of this D lambda, D mu that I have at the beginning. So I would, so remember this D lambda, they were uh, algebraic induction. So here the idea is to produce a locally analytic induction. That is all the idea. And you meet, you put Q in the middle and you say, uh, you have, you are doing analytic variation on the nilpotent of the Q and outside of it, you are going to do algebraic variation. So you fix some u, lambda zero, u zero inside this weighted space, some, some special, and you produce the space au. That will be, so you start on the levy, you have algebraic variation, okay? You, you do the algebraic variation to the levy of your lambda zero. Secondly, you produce periodic variation using this u0. And finally, you go from the levy to the unipotent and now you allow analytic variation. So you produce a locally analytic induction from, from the opposite of your parabolic. So this is a little bit uh, technical when, when I write like that, but the idea is you are now allowing not local, not algebraic induction, it's locally analytic induction, and that gives you the variation. Okay, the analog, the DU that we have at the beginning will be the, the du continuous dual of this space. Naturally, AU is a, is a fractured space, okay? And you have some natural topology and you can take the dual. And this module gives you the coefficient that you have before and you, as you already suppose maybe, the Hecke models that you are considering are, are going to be this one. The total cohomology or some degrees of the cohomology of your arithmetic manifold. 
So this is the Hecke models that you, you are considering. And finally, the last object that you consider to produce eigenvariety is, is classicality. I didn't stop the sharing, no. It's okay sharing the, the... Yeah, 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 it's okay. Okay. The last is classicality. And let me give, just give in words what I mean that classicality is a way to detect Automorphic representation in sub, in, inside of this overconvergent cohomology, which is a huge cohomology. Okay, We're using these three datas, okay, you put them together using uh, the machinery of Hansen or Urban, or but we are we use mainly the Hansen machinery uh, to produce. Eigenvarieties. Okay, that is the our work, and that is the ideas behind to this construction. The point is that these periodic families are very well situated for arithmetic application, arithmetic applications. Okay, uh, let me finish the talk, to giving you some ideas in the case of gel two n, which is the the work that I mentioned at the beginning. So we will focus on gel 2n over q. I told you that for any totally real number field, but for over q is, is enough to give some ideas, okay? Okay, so in this situation, everything is explicit now. For example, uh, the Borel, oops. The Borel that you have is the up, we use the upper triangular matrices. Okay, you need, we are working in a parabolic family. So we use a special parabolic, which come from naturally from the situation that we'll explain you later. So this is the levy of this parabolic is JLN, JLN, and the unipotent is that one. That is your, and you have another a levy, as I told you, and an unipotent. And the levy, as I told you, is a matrix GLN cross GLN in the diagonal. That are our, that is our situation in this case. Okay, one remark is that in this situation, the variation that you obtain is two dimensional using this Q. If you use the, the machinery explained before, it's two dimensional, that means you lose a lot of dimension. If you use the B to produce families, you obtain a lot more variation. It's two end variation. Here you, use two, you obtain two, but it's okay. It's still good for applications. Okay, uh, now we fix the setting here. I mean, it will be this, I will be more precise for the automorphic representation that we are considering. So it will be a caspidal automorphic representation of gel 2 and A satisfying a, a lot of condition we are a priori you will see, but they are, a lot of them are very analogs of the four modular forms that you have in the classical situation are essentially exactly the same. For example, one condition that for modular forms that you have, the weight is K or bigger, K is bigger or equal than two. And then you can go by Shimura, you can go to the cohomology and to do some cohomological construction. So pi is cohomological. Uh, it's a cohomological of weights. And the weight here will be, we will call lambda zero two. And we, it's a tuple here. You remember the torus here is only a G, GM on the diagonal two n times. And so the, the characters are identified with tuple of numbers are in ZP in Z2N. And we, we suppose that they, or, they satisfy this order. That is called, the, these kind of weights are called regular, this condition and dominant regular. And we suppose that it's pure. And there is six some um, numbers such that 
this is constant, okay? Second condition that is analog of to be weights bigger or equal than two. The second condition is, is serious. Is a conjugate, a conjugate a symplectic. What mean that? If you, yesterday in, a, in the art talk, you see a game with the condition to be essentially self-dual and non-essentially self-dual. Here is, we are in the essentially self-dual situation. And the essentially self-dual, you can have orthogonal or symplectic or have symplectic, which is the same that you, you are, you come from some, some spin, J spin 2n plus one group. There is a transfer from there. So, okay, that this is a strong condition. Okay, that this condition, okay, this is a strong. Okay, the third condition, we are supposing by technical reason that we can remove it just to state a clear theorem is we suppose that the level is one, okay? In terms of the, in this situation, that's mean that PL, if you, talk, if you take the invariance by ZL, that is different, is, oh, different of zero for H prime, okay? Uh, this condition can be removed and the paper is written without this condition, but some mild hypothesis and you need to work more. This is a condition at P that need to appear in the classical situation. Here is more involved how you write this condition but appear in the classical situation. So you have the P part of the automorphic representation. You know that is spherical at, at P because of the assumption. So the invariant by the parahoric are not zero. Here you have a natural operator acting UP which is the double classes of uh, essentially is the operator, you put n times p in the diagonal and one in the rest, in the that's in the classical case. And you, there is this operator here. And the condition is that up admits a simple eigenvalue. Eigenvalue that we will call alpha q. And you suppose also some local integral is not zero, okay? Secondly, you suppose some is analog of the classical situation is the small slope condition. It's, you can strengthen it to, to call non-critical, but to be clear, just let me give you the slope, small slope condition, which in this situation is very similar to the classical case with the, in the classical case is less or equal than k plus one. Here is less or equal than this number. Okay, and finally, the, the, the last condition is, okay, if you remember the picture that we have at the beginning, you have a Galois representation attached to your uh, automorphic representation. We will consider the, the piadic automorphic representation and we suppose that this one is irreducible. Okay, maybe you think that there are a lot, a lot of conditions, but it's reasonable. Condition C2 will be very great to remove, but our method doesn't remove it and the rest are reasonable. Okay, the theorem that I want to state, that is a theorem with uh, Dimitrov and Williams. Uh, 2020. And is that goals one, the construction of the piadic automorphic representation is done. Goal two, we study the, uh, the eigenvariety around our point and we prove this et al. That is, so we prove that our eigenvariety there is et al. And goal three, we construct uh, piadic functions over the eigenvariety, in fact, uh, around the neighborhood of your point where we study et al, were implemented To pi. Uh, in fact, to be more honest, you need to pi alpha because it's a choice of an eigenvalue. Okay, and that is the main theorem. Okay, this theorem can be applied without any hypothesis to you need to take a modular form of weight one or p ordinary. 
and weight k bigger or equal than two, you take the symmetric cube of it. Satisfy all the condition and you can apply it and you have a family passing through construct the periodical function, you have family there. Okay, I, so I have, that is, I wanted to explain. I have what two minutes to give the main ingredient of the proof, but I'm not sure if that maybe is, is okay. If I have two minutes to give um, just yeah, the main ingredient. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So main ingredients of the proof in of this work. Okay. Okay. So you have all the formalism of the strategy that we, we said before. And so there are stuff to do still. And mainly the study of the variety, which is, a, is very important. Also step one, step two, you remember you have, you need a relation with L values, okay? So lambda zero, we fix this. We have the lambda zero, which is the weight of the automorphic representation. We fix an affinoid U in this space attached to lambda zero. Okay. We suppose that is affinoid some technical condition. And firstly, the first important, so the classical evaluation in step one was performed by Raguram and Grobner a long time ago. Okay. But to apl applying this method, was used is now and we will use a step one there and we develop a step two and a step three so the first fact that we exploit to develop to do a step two and a step three is that pi the automorphic representations appears in cohomology degrees this is an important situation an important fact an important fact to see where appear in the cohomology, the automorphic representation is, is something studied in different context. So this, in this case, this appear in level n square, all the degrees until the top degree, which is t equal n square plus n minus one. Appealing all these degrees, we crucially works at level t, at degree t. And that is, we work at t. And that is, is, is very, very important. So the study of the, the cohomology because you can prove that the cohomology is, is generated by one element in some way. That's in, uh, you can prove the cohomology generated by, uh, by one element. And that is very important to work, at, 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 to work there. Uh, secondly, you have three ingredients to, to, to do it. And the first one is that to work there. Secondly, uh, construct, this evaluation maps all linear uh, functional. This all linear functional is the evaluation map that we have at the beginning. No? Come from here, from the cohomology of the U to the distributions of zeta p star with values in OU. Uh, that is for each beta e bigger or equal than zero. We have a, a family of functionals and we relate them uh, to L values. And finally, uh, the last point is that the, the eigen variety, So we call, let me call EQ, the eigen variety construct in this, in the part three. It's a eigen variety, it's a, a, um, give, it's a map, it's a rigid space over your weight space, okay? Uh, your automorphic representation leaves, so here naturally you have lambda zero. Your automorphic representation naturally leaves here. In fact, the choice of the automorphic representation and the, and the eigenvalue there. That give a point of the eigenvariety. And we prove is the eigenvariety is et al at our point. This was crucially, crucially used uh, one and two. It's, it's very important to use one and two because one give you 
to work in top degree give you that this the cohomology that is behind the construction of like variety is generated by one element so in fact it's cyclic so and to produce dimension you need to use the second one that this map are all linear and that is the strategy okay so that gives you some ideas of the proof of the theorem and i stop here thank you daniel Are there questions for Daniel? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, we thank the speaker again.